Before the video starts, I want to give a statement as a just in case. The statement is to protect me and the video. Even though this statement is in the description of every video, sometimes it's just better to say it and put it in the video itself. The statement is, copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comments, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright institute that might otherwise be infringing. This channel is a reaction, news, commentary channel that gives its opinion and such and criticism. This video and all the other videos on my channel are under this. Now with that said, make sure to like and subscribe. If you enjoy the video, I make content just like this and have other videos on my channel like this. Please go check them out. With all that said, enjoy. Today, I'm going to be talking about the disgusting actions of Michael Quinn. I've talked about him before in a video titled, TikTok is protecting awful people which included other TikTokers who have done bad things that just never seemed to stay banned. If you don't know who Michael Quinn is, he is a owner of a hot dog business in New York called Feltman's of Coney Island. He was also a substitute teacher at one point and that he was a substitute teacher and apparently couldn't control his temper while being trolled by some students. Michael Quinn getting bullied as substitute teacher. Okay, this is not gonna go on anymore. Enough. But he is only really known for hanging out with Joshua Block, also known as World of T-Shirts, which if you don't know is an autistic TikToker with an alcohol problem, which has only gotten worse in the recent time. He's done the drinking for I think about a year, and it's just progressively gotten worse and worse. I've talked about Josh aka World of T-Shirts in a recent video, which if you have not checked it out yet, you should go ahead and check it out. I guess after this video because it'll show like what all Michael Quinn has either caused or helped. I might make another video on him in the near future because there's a lot that's actually happened, but to go on, Michael Quinn is one of, if not the only person close to Josh or World of T-Shirts that actually has some influence on him or someone that he'll actually listen to, besides maybe his family, which I don't think really talk to him that much. When Michael tries to act like he is Josh's mentor, but does nothing to help Josh at all. He didn't even guide him to not smoking a cigarette with a stranger one time on a TikTok live and just sat there and recorded him. As you can see in the clip, he looks pretty new to smoking as he's coughing a bit. And you can also see that Michael Quinn is just sitting there recording him. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny because Josh is just sitting there like chiefing the cigarette, like not really giving himself time to breathe or anything, just back-to-back -back hits of a cigarette. <laughs> I, I, I just thought it was funny. But to go on, like I said before, you can see Joe, Michael Quinn is just, Seeing they're recording him, not helping at all, not saying, hey, maybe you shouldn't do this. The only thing I've seen Josh do smoking-wise before this was hookah, which I don't know if Josh smoked cigarettes before this or not, but it looked like his first time or his near first time. Uh, I know that Josh and Michael Quinn hung out in hookah lounges and stuff, and I feel like if you put Josh in an environment, even before he drank, uh, I'm pretty sure if you put him in an environment where, you know, hookahs were being used or something like that, he would have took it. But my guess is that Michael, my guess is that Michael Quinn actually got him to start, you know, hitting hookah. The alcohol, I don't really know, which I get into that in a little bit later. But I, I would assume that they were hanging out in hookah lounges and either Michael Quinn told him to take a hit or he wanted to take a hit himself. And I mean, He's of age, and he's around every, all of that. It's most likely going to happen. Which, of course, is another addiction that he could get into, which I think he is now actually into, as World of T-Shirts has been recently seen with Zins, which are little nicotine pouches you put on your gums. And the last time I saw, he had two cans on him at one time, which is crazy. Michael Quinn doesn't help Josh at all, and the only thing Michael Quinn does is talk to Josh, make videos about or with him, 
and go on TikTok Live with them, basically using him for both money and views. And it's getting clearer and easier to see as Michael Quinn more recently has been getting banned on TikTok frequently. And on one of his recent accounts, he'll upload old videos of him that had Josh or Daniel in them. And yeah, Michael Quinn, fully knowing of Daniel Larson's past, invites him to hang out with Josh both giving him a platform and attention, as well as using them both for views and money. If you don't know who Daniel Larson is, I have a series on my channel where I update everyone on what Ollie has been up to. Definitely go check it out after watching this video or watching the video on World of T-Shirts. But to go on, the TikToks Michael Quinn does on Josh or Daniel are the only ones that really get him a good amount of views, unless he's talking about Josh's drink tracker or trying to start drama with random content creators. Michael Quinn has been banned on TikTok a few times due to him getting drunk on stream and saying the n-word, and probably due to his posts on the Josh's drink tracker, and also the other dramas he's been in. But if you don't know, Josh, like I said before, has a drinking problem, and since the popularity of the problem has risen, a TikToker by the name of at World of Alcohol Tracker has been tracking Josh's drinks he posts on social media, because that's mainly what Josh has been posting nowadays, is just him drinking and sometimes just him saying random things. The account puts up a spreadsheet showing the time he drank, how many drinks he drank in that hour, the blood alcohol level he'd be at, and a lot of other cool information. Here's a video for example. Being this amount and this often is dangerous and will lead to alcohol dependency. Please drink responsibly. Welcome back everybody. Today will be the recap for yesterday, March 22nd, and the day before that, March 21st. And we will also include a weekly recap for the past seven days. I will quickly summarize these last two days so we can get into the weekly recap. So on March 21st, Josh had a high noon, two fireball shooters, a mixed cocktail, and a long island. Now of course the long island is going to be three standard drinks by itself, but he finishes the day off with about seven and a half drinks on camera, a max BAC of 0.08, he spent a total of $33, drank 800 calories in alcohol, and assuming he didn't drink off camera, was sober for about 11 hours. Yesterday on the 22nd, Josh had some Baileys in his coffee in the morning for one drink. He had a 24 ounce straw burrito. For those of you unaware, these are 8% alcohol by volume, contain about 24 ounces of liquid, and here's the math showing that this is about three and a half standard drinks. And drop a comment down below right now before you hear the answer of how many calories you think are in this one can of alcohol. If you said anything under 600, you'd be incorrect because there are 600 calories in this one can. It's kind of insane. He also had a martini for one and a half drinks, a high noon for one drink, a mixed cocktail for one and a half drinks, and a tall boy twisted tea for two standard drinks. This brings the totals for yesterday to 10 drinks on camera, max BAC of 0.16, which is about twice the legal limit for driving. He spent about $45 on alcohol, drank 1600 calories, and was sober for about 12 hours if he wasn't drinking off camera. Now let's take a look at the weekly totals. This includes the entire last week. However, I don't have data for the 15th or the 16th, so this data will be slightly incorrect as far as averages go. So for the last week he had a total of 61 standard drinks on camera spent a total of 252 dollars on alcohol alone he drank 8,000 calories in alcohol his highest BAC was 0.35 which is beyond the blackout range and in the range where your body will start rejecting all the alcohol that you're drinking and where medical intervention might be a good idea because I don't have data for the two days before St. Patrick's Day, this says he was sober for 71 total hours in the past week, or about 42% of the time, but if he was drinking on those two days, that number will go down. And of course, before we wrap it up, here is a chart of his BAC over the past week. You can see where he was aggressively drinking on St. Patrick's Day with initial line spikes upwards, and then you can see the couple days following where he never let his BAC really fall below like a 0.15 and just, um, continue drinking the day afterwards. So if this date is correct, he basically spent three entire days just completely hammered. This is important to know that if you don't let your BAC fall to zero and have days off of drinking, you're inviting your body to get physically dependent on it, and that's when you start developing withdrawal symptoms. And the longer you do this and the more often you do this, the worse it gets. That's all I've got for you in this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Michael Quinn has been obsessing over the drink tracker, saying that he's using Josh for money and exploiting him, which is the true definition of projection because that's all Michael Quinn is doing. As Michael Quinn just posts on and on about Josh, and maybe every once in a while posts a little bit about his own life, which 
to be honest, no one really cares about. He says the same thing about anyone who makes a video on Josh. He claims they want followers or views or are getting money off of it or just trying to promote something, which is all things Michael Quinn does. Josh is supposed to have one to block him. I'm that guy. Holy oh, shit. Well, I mean, talk about having no life. There's no life. He has no. Who wants to be at a party where someone's counting how many drinks you're having? So, what's his point? He's making money off it. You know, he's farming gifts over Josh's drinking. At least I'm trying to help Josh. Is what the hell does this dude Michael Quinn even do? He claims to be World of T shirt. Alright, so first of all, I'm not anyone's manager, and I never claimed to be. I'm nowhere even close to 55 years old. I mean, this is the least of it. But where's the due diligence? Where's the fact checking? And I would never, ever encourage someone to be self-destructive. This video is made just for views, to monetize on views. There's absolutely no truth in this video. Do not believe it. So homie right here is like the drink tracker guy, but on steroids. He's actually using Josh to market his own business. Do yourself a favor and me a favor and Josh a favor. Just leave him alone. He's my friend, not yours. Now there are other examples I wish I could have used for this video. There are like a few more TikToks. There's actually a lot of TikToks that uh, would show more proof of what I'm talking about here. But due to Michael Quinn having copywritten music or possibly copywritten music in the background of these TikToks, I can't use them i don't want to risk it or anything but if you go look at his account and stuff and you go look at his like live stream clips and stuff like that he uses a lot of keywords such as exploitation money views and stuff like that and like uh like followers clout and all that like he uses those words a lot and those are the key things i was trying to get off of this or, or from these clips and uh, you can, of course, go look at the account yourself, but uh, I just don't want to risk using copyrighted music, which I think is what he does on purpose. I'm pretty sure it's intentional unless he thinks it's either like cool or he's trying to get more views on TikTok because if you do use a sound uh, like background music, it'll put it in a category of all the other videos that use that same background music or just the music in general, and it helps you get more views on there. So there's like a few reasons he could have used it, but I'm pretty sure it's for the ones I said. He either thinks it's cool, he doesn't want YouTubers to see this, or he's just trying to get more views on TikTok. Michael Quinn ended up making a TikTok saying some things towards the drink tracker's mom, and also the drink tracker was recently doxxed by Michael Quinn himself. He ends up actually saying his government name, saying where he lives, and then showing a picture of him and calls him ugly. There is a video but it has background music in it and I was just gonna like censor it to the utmost and like not even show the video itself because uh just so you can see his mouth moving and everything just be as safe as possible. Uh, he because he claims like AI a lot. He claims like everything's AI, like Josh saying the N word, which he's done a few times recently. Uh, but to go on on Reddit, you can actually find the actual Drink Tracker's account. It's under a different name. He says that some of the information in this uh, TikTok was actually incorrect, which he doesn't say well all was incorrect, which makes sense. But this is such a disgusting act and truly unforgivable. This man shouldn't own any business nor be on social media. It's actually insane to think that this dude literally just tracks how much Josh drinks and some other info and, and maybe every few videos makes a small comment on Michael Quinn and that's it. And then he gets harassed and doxxed by Michael Quinn himself. Actually just so pathetic and sad. And it's just really strange. You can tell Michael Quinn only cares so much about the money. Because he brings it up all the time in videos and live streams. It's simply agreed in a weird obsession over some autistic kid that is now an alcoholic. Being a grown man and doing all this is incredibly... Like how long is Michael Quinn going to ride Josh? Because he's at least in his 40s. And Josh, if he keeps doing what he does, doesn't have much longer left. Someone should tell Josh to block Michael Quinn for good. I'd love to see Michael Quinn's reaction to him losing his paycheck and views. It's pretty interesting he has a whole business, but you never see him post about it. But people sure do know about business as it's gotten terrible reviews because of Michael Quinn's posting and exploitation of Josh. The reviews both criticize the place of business and the owner Michael Quinn himself. 
Now, some of these reviews are saying he talks to little girls, which I haven't heard anything about or know if that is true. I tried to look it up, and I couldn't really find anything besides some stuff towards Josh, which I'll be showing later. They also say Michael Quinn does booger sugar, which I don't know if it's true or not. Some of the reviews look legit, and others are just about Michael Quinn. He's probably gotten a lot of reviews deleted from Google, but here are some of those reviews. One star. Went in with my little sister, 15 years old. She said a fat guy kept bothering her, talking about being a millionaire and asking her about TikTok, trying to get her to follow him. She told me we got out and later learned Deep is the owner. Do not support. Quinn is a weirdo. Don't buy from here. He'll get money from exploiting young autistic adults anyway. Terrible tasting dog would much rather have any random street vendor. Which is another good point. Like, I get, like, okay, there's some weird obsession about hot dogs in New York. But there's literally just like, ain't there like random street carts in like 60 other places? It's like pizza. There's like several other places. If you're selling overpriced hot dogs, like how is your business, one, afloat, and two, what's the point of even like going here? I don't really get the hype. The next review says, So me and my son went there for some doggies while eating. I had to go to the toilet. Left my autistic son at the table. When I went back, I was greeted by the owner of the shop making my autistic son down 99 bananas and film TikToks of them. Absolutely absurd. Also, when we went home, we both got sick from the hot dogs. Which, if you don't know, 99 bananas, it's an alcohol. It's just a little shot, uh, basically in a glass bottle of shooter is what they call them. Next one says, here on vacation, decided to try this place. Big mistake. The hot dogs were like rubber and had a sour taste, which disgusted me when I heard this. Because how? But to go on, we noticed a young man working after we had already eaten a few bites. As he was very loud, we could tell he was mentally challenged, which is fine, but the man working with him was allowing him to touch the food with bare hands. He had no gloves on, his fingernails were long and dirty. We quickly said something, and he treated us like we were in the wrong. Very poor customer service. Later on, we experienced diarrhea. It just poured out of us like hot brown rain. Never eat here. Another one says, these hot dogs gave my son autism. I don't know what to do with them. Maybe film a TikTok or something. The place of business at the moment with 97 Google reviews is 2.4 stars. So pretty bad rating. And again, like I said, I don't know how he keeps the place like actually open because it doesn't seem like he works at the place at all. It seems like he just does nothing about the place uh as he's like never there and also like i just don't see the big point of hot dogs like don't get me wrong hot dogs are good and all that but a whole place where they're selling like the first thing i saw was like 80 dollar packs whenever you look up feltman's of coney island like you see like 80 dollars that's the first thing i see i'm like no no you're not selling me a hot dog for 80 dollars i don't care where i am and it's like a pack of hot dogs but still i'm not gonna lie though michael quinn does give off some super weird vibes so I just voted today, babes. You want to be on the winning side, the winning side? Here I am, babe. That's me. It's the Quinn effect, babe. So I got up super early, finished my yoga class. Now I'm on to the pool, babes. You're a grown man saying babe like that. It's just super weird. And it's just weird. It gives me a really weird and sketchy vibe. Michael Quinn's obsession with Josh actually goes a little bit deeper. As if you look from recent TikToks where Michael Quinn seems to attempt to isolate Josh from having any other friends or connections. And when people want to help Josh, he makes weird response videos. There's also him putting his arm around him in these videos. And also acting like he's got a little sugar in his tank when around him. It's truly weird, cringy, and creepy. Cheers. Ricky, I don't need you. I am the Quinn Effect. Quinn Effect, babe. Scram! Scram! So homie right here is like the drink tracker guy, but on steroids. He's actually using Josh to market his own business. Do yourself a favor, and me a favor, and Josh a favor. Just leave him alone. He's my friend, not yours. He's my friend, not yours. Michael Quinn is a grown man, 
and uses autistic people for money, views, and followers on social media. Despite him having his own business that could have worked out without him posting online, and the online posts only hurting his business, he still insists on following her around and using Josh. I don't know how long this friendship of theirs will last, Josh is going more and more downhill as he creates more incidences, like assaulting a woman, which I guess he was trying to pinch her on St. Patrick's Day, but it was just really weird, and I couldn't see, like, the full thing. I low-key thought he ran up to this girl and grabbed her boob. I'll show the clip here. Yo, yo, hit up, bro. Yo, yo, I, I know, bro. He's also had a lot of public freakouts and attempted assaults, public intoxication, which is a crime of its own. Speaking of crimes, he's also been arrested a couple of times recently as well. Josh's drinking supposedly started when Michael Quinn came into the picture. Whether this was cause of Michael Quinn or just a Josh's own accord, I don't know. Michael Quinn has also supported some of Josh's bad behaviors, such as being selfish, and his I live paycheck to paycheck line. He's also made Josh stay on the internet when he doesn't want to, doing things such as cameos, which he complained about in the past. Uh, I'll show you the clip from the TikTok is protecting awful people video. All he does is record Josh during his breakdowns on his own account, by the way, and just encourages his entitled selfish behavior. Trying to cancel me over a cameo? This is gonna get more publicity. You unemployed I'll sue your parents. I'll sue their grandparents. I'll be working a nine to five at 90 years old with a walking cane. Living paycheck to paycheck. Living paycheck to paycheck. Because I'll come after their retirement funds. Emotional damage, loss of income, loss of enjoyment of life. I'll be a billionaire. I'll get you the best lawyer in New York City. Good. You have millions of dollars. I know. I have a lot of them. I don't have to find a contingency lawyer. You could pay for a retainer. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll take care of it yeah. for you. I'm the only one who takes care of Josh. No one else does. I set up with Cameo. Such a good life, and I threw it all away by joining Cameo. The only one who cares for Josh is me, Michael Quinn. No one else. No one else. Tell him. No one else. Michael Quinn is my is my mentor. See that? I'm, I'm using you. I'm not using Josh. You have to follow me. You can't cancel me. No one else gives you the job opportunities. No one else but me you know, right I'm here. Like, he told me to say the N-word. Snowflake. I didn't know it was racist. You look paycheck to paycheck. I look paycheck to paycheck. Funky monkey. Poor that funky monkey. If I get canceled on TikTok, I need to f myself. You look paycheck to paycheck. I look paycheck to paycheck. Maybe Michael Quinn's behavior stems from not having power over the kids he was trying to substitute teach, and now that he has power over someone, he actually really likes it. But at the same time, he owns a business, so he could just, you know, be bossy or, you know, have power over his co-workers. So why not leave Josh alone? Maybe it's a different thing. I don't know. I don't really know. That's just one of my theories. Michael Quinn's life also could just be way better more peaceful and just better a quality of life like in every single way if he just never went around josh and just left him alone as i feel like he could have been some tiktoker from new york who vlogs his life and talks about his past because he seems to like you know he owns a business and then he does all this other side stuff and knows a lot of the history and just has a life of his own that he can talk about that people would listen to but sadly he's gotten himself into a situation where even if he gets away from josh the stuff he's done will have long-lasting effects on his life, especially just on the internet, as it's already affected his business and any other endeavor he tries to get into. I'm assuming that people will, you know, make people know around him of what he's done. I'm also very curious to see if Michael Coyne would actually see this video, because I feel like he's one of the people that looks up his name, looks up the most recent videos made on him, and then watches them maybe completely or just, you know... From the way that he makes it sound, you know, he just watches a second of it and makes his own assumptions, so we'll just have to see. But the truth is, Josh doesn't have much longer left if he keeps up drinking like how he does, and that means Michael Quinn doesn't have much more time to leech off of him. I'm pretty interested to see how this all goes from here. Will they break up? How will Michael Quinn react to Josh's death? Will Michael Quinn get into deeper drama or be exposed in the future? What will Josh and Michael Quinn do or get into next? I guess we'll have to wait and find out. Thank you all for watching and let me know what you all think about this situation in the comments down below. Personally, I think Michael Quinn is just a leech who projects his greed onto other content creators who make videos about the situation, whether it's him or Josh. He's a very ignorant, grown man who uses Josh and gave a pedo a platform. He definitely needs to be banned from everywhere and needs to get away from Josh. Michael Quinn being around is only really going to hurt Josh and Josh is not going to probably stop drinking anytime soon. And Michael Quinn isn't going to try to stop him anytime soon. But again, let me know your all's thoughts about this in the comments down below. 
Thank you all for watching, and thank you all for over 9,000 subscribers. I hope I get to hit 10,000. I'm actually super excited. Coming after 10,000 subscribers will be a few announcements, but till then, if you like this video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Check out the video on World of T-shirts I made, as well as the series on Daniel, if you haven't seen it already. And if you've already seen both of those, then check out my Pyrocynical video if you have not already. It should, by the time this video comes out, be in its own playlist. And if it's not, then remind me and I'll put a playlist up of it. Videos on both Josh and Daniel will be in the near future. Much love to all who support me. And I hope you all have an amazing week. But with all that said, in the end, I'm Perk30. And... I think you were misunderstanding why I have my viewpoints on Josh. I am a recovering alcoholic. I have been tracking Josh for about a year, maybe even more than a year at this point. And I think a lot of people that are commenting this type of stuff don't understand Josh's exact situation. Um, his mom died of cancer. His dad is an addict, either in rehab or possibly dead. I'm not sure about that. I don't know if his grandma is still alive, but his grandpa is and offered him a place at home if he chooses to be sober, but he just won't. Josh is also an autistic adult that has gathered a mass following of people enabling his addiction. In the world of addiction, you need a supportive environment to beat addiction, and you cannot beat it when that supportive environment is telling you to do the exact opposite. And the reason I say Josh is truly long gone is because people like myself, I have never gone to the point where I'm running up and down trains, spitting on people, trying to instigate fights. I have never been a public threat while under the influence, which Josh has become. I went in for a doctor's appointment recently and I was unfortunately diagnosed with being sexy and it's terminal. Again, Reddit trolls have been mass reporting my videos. Why? Because I speak the truth. And you know what? You can't handle the truth. So this was the perfect storm that led to World of T-Shirts epic bender this weekend. So of course it went down while I was away at Disney, so I couldn't be there in person to help him. Of course we had some bad actors involved, scoring some photos and encouraging behavior that I'm totally against. And how could we forget the drink tracker guy salivating, waiting in the wings, causing a frenzy among Josh's followers. I am so tired of making these videos about the pathetic loser that is Michael Quinn. World of T-Shirts did not go on a bender because you weren't there. His drinking started when you entered the picture. It's always everybody's fault except your own that Josh drinks. It's the drink tracker guy or his crazy fans. It's never the adult who has the most influence over him's fault. Yourself. Every time I talk about the situation, I get flamed and told that I also take advantage of Josh. So this is probably all I'm going to say about it, but it's really depressing to watch. You can't handle the truth! Well, I don't do my iconic victory dance for nothing. Okay, I guess just this once I can do it for nothing. Ew, ew, ew! Okay, I guess I can do one more for nothing. Ew, ew, ew!